chess opening preparation is the topic of GM Talks today. I played three games in the Swedish league in the weekend and there was something good, something bad and something ugly. And uh, it's sort of a status on how people prepare today in modern chess on uh, on an international level, uh, I'm, I'm an, an old guy uh, and I don't have much time for, for preparation. So it's, it is a problem for me and, and we, could, we could definitely see that in the Bundesliga, in not the Bundesliga, the Schach, uh, the Elite Series it's called uh, in, in Sweden. So in the first game we're going to see, I'm, I'll, I'll show the game as black. And uh, against Pia Kramnik, the legendary uh, woman grandmaster from Sweden, has been uh, the strongest wo uh, woman in, uh, in chess in the north for, uh, I don't know, four decades or something like that. So she is, uh, and I lost to her prior to, to this game. Anyway, uh, this is an example of how good preparation goes. Uh, because I only had 15 minutes because uh, they, they, they shuffled the board. You can played against all kinds of players and uh, and I didn't prepare for her and uh, and then suddenly whoop she came out of the hat and I had to play uh, and but I had an idea uh, in in I had a few ideas I had to check and one of them turned out which was one, one of them I like so here I'm black against Pierre Kramnik I will uh, write it in a note and I play the Queen's Gambit accepted uh, this is uh, sort of an easy to learn opening that you can always uh, play um, it's of course giving away a little bit of the center, but um, well, uh, you get easy development and so on. And she always plays like like this. And here is my big preparation because when I looked at her games in the Queen's Gambit uh, accepted, I realized she always plays the Furman variation. And what is the Furman variation? The Furman variation is C5, um, Queen E2 followed by d takes c5 uh, so that's what she, she usually does uh, f with with uh, the white pieces uh, and it's dangerous you will follow up with uh, e4 e5 uh, i played this one time against krasenkov i think i think it was a draw but it is a little bit scary uh, and i was not sure i like this but i had an idea uh, instead of c5 why not just go a6 first? And then the Furman variation looks ridiculous because on queen e2 you can just go b5 and bishop b7 and, and then knight d7 and c5 and take with the knight on c5 instead and so on. So I thought that was pretty smart uh, and uh, <laughs> I think she thought so too. And then she decided, okay, um, I'm just gonna do something um, because after she castled, which, which she's still hoping for the Furman, and then I showed her, uh -uh, you're not going to get the Furman variation, because I'm, I'm preparing to play b5, bishop b7, before I play c5. So this was the big point, and then she came up with a3, Jesus Christ, right? Uh, and we became some like, uh, like this, uh, c5, and she takes. <laughs> and 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 played b4, and, uh, and after something like this, um, I think she played this move here, here, and here. This, of course, this was I was hoping to get some winning chances, but against this, no way. So I just decided to to offer draw, and she took that. And that's of course is considered a success for Black. Um, so okay, so let's go back and uh, see my game in the the last game in in the tournament where I was playing a uh, Will uh, William. Olson, I think his name is, and uh, a promising young Swedish player. I was right, and uh, I had prepared this move for the weekend, so this was what I did. He always plays something like the slow. Well, actually, he plays c5, and I had prepared something against it, but then he suddenly plays c6, and it turned out he had played that early as well. I had seen a game he played against Tiger in the Swedish Championship, uh, and this was what uh, I had prepared, and he took. Um, and this is a long false line uh, after castle, knight d7, um, knight a3, knight b6, queen c2. All this is, is known theory. The, the thing is, if white gets to get this pawn uh, without uh, giving any concessions, he's uh, clearly, slightly but clearly better. 
So this is um, is, uh, but of course Black is is def- uh, hanging on to the pawn. And here uh, Tiger, he just plays B3 here and sacrifices the pawns. It looks very spe- spe- it's, It doesn't look well. It doesn't look correct to to play this move. It's, it looks a little bit too much. Anyway, the the big theory is this. Uh, and then uh, if you go Queen D4, you take on C6. A lot of lines there. I had analyzed it a little bit, uh, and they, but this is also known as. Uh, as a, a good line for black or one of the, the best line so all this is is theory played before and and it was it was uh, like 10 in the morning and my opponent was just passing out the moves and you know i really hate that so that's uh, that's something to consider for for anybody else playing me when you play me in the morning just splits out the moves it's so annoying oh uh, anyway uh, this is all a known theory um take Take and this is a little. I'm, I'm threatening to take here, right? Uh, this is a little bit uh, spooky uh, for Black, uh, who has to be careful. There was a high-level game where uh, um, Duva played Queen C8 against um, Ding Lira and won in spectacular fashion with something Bishop D2 at the end, uh, just mating uh, the poor uh, later world champion. But it's not the best move. The best move is. Uh, this move and that looks really weird uh, and he plays and I play Queen C3 and of course I would love to have the ending here against uh, a young player uh, with with uh, slightly better pieces slightly better uh, pawn structure it would be just a, a, a dream come true for for an old uh, technical player like me but of course he goes back and then uh, and the problem is this move here and all this is theory and I did actually analyze this um, the big problem for white here is rook d1 and p takes. So if if you, you could just play rook d1, you'll be really happy. But the problem is this, and you are just losing. Uh, so so because take and bishop a3, and uh, it's it's not good. It's not good at all. So um, so you can't play that. And um, and something like bishop f4 is really bad. I think uh, knight d5 is really annoying, just taking the bishop. e3 simply doesn't look good. So the main line is actually to go back, and this explains why he played queen d4. And uh, he took here, I analyzed this, uh, and uh, here uh, the main line uh, apparently is knight d7. Um, but he didn't play knight d7. Uh, he passed out queen b6 very fast. So that was, um, thank you. Thank you for for my preparation here. So uh, and I couldn't remember anything anymore here. Uh, we are at move uh, 16. He passed out all his moves. So this is an example of how not to prepare. This was a bad preparation um, on my part, and uh, and basically I'm not getting a game against uh, the, this this player. And of course he's he's a decent player, but I should get a game. I'm a grandmaster. It's <laughs> it's not supposed to happen like this. Anyway, this is um, this is all. And he plays d6, the best move. Bishop e3, queen c7, um, take. And he take back with the queen, and he and I play rook d1. And here he has to be very careful. Uh, but he was, of course, if he plays queen c7. But he had all analyzed all this. So it's like like what 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 what. If he plays this, um, then this actually uh, is is better for white. It's not a disaster, but it's it's clearly a plus for white here uh, because he can't take because of the check and the check on d7 and the queen is hanging on c7. Um, but he played uh, queen c8, and uh, after something like this, we uh, I didn't know what to do here, so I played something like this: uh, knight f3, bishop d5, b b3, and I offered a draw, and he took the draw and was probably happy. Uh, I think it's it's almost like I'm not I'm definitely not better. I would probably prefer black but it's it's not position where you just you don't get anything and he's not going to not going to mess it up and um, so that was that was a disaster okay 
Um, so let's get back to the real game we're going to show. That was in the first round against uh, Peter Bergstrom, um, the National Code of Sweden. I play, again play C4. This was, as I said, my preparation for this uh, weekend. But it was not deep preparation. It was not like I had a complete repertoire uh, stacked out. And after uh, this move and this move and this move, again, I, I'm playing this system. And this, I probably should not have played this against uh, Olson, but... This was the preparation, and he played bishop d4. And I was like, okay, I've seen this before, and then you go knight e5, and he goes back, something like this, and you take, and he takes, and you go back, and you will hit the, the bishop with something like this, or knight here, uh, and later you'll play d4, and it will be, uh, it will be better for white. Uh, I, I actually played this in a game in the Bundesliga once, uh, I think against... Uh, I think Brazilian Grandmaster Fier, I think, uh, and I was better in that game, uh, but he played well. Okay, then he played bc 5 I was like, I don't remember now. Oh no, oh no, why did you do this to me? I was like, ah, oh. and, and the thing is, you could try, but you just... I don't know. It's 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 difficult. But anyway, I should I should I think uh, I should take here and take back and castle is 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 apparently uh, the best way to play here for white. Uh, the thing is, the knight is a little bit annoying here, uh, and uh, he has to be careful not to to get into some sort of trouble. Uh, I could sometimes give checks. Uh, sometimes I go d4 and so on. And if you go knight c6, I take and play d3. It, it, it can't be much. Anyway, I thought the, 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 what you're supposed to do was this move. So I play queen b3 and uh, now we are more or less out of book <laughs> immediately. So that was uh, great stuff. But he played this move and I thought, okay, then I might have some chance to, to, to do something. The, the thing is with this move is um, it covers, of course, uh, the pawn that was attacked. But it also sometimes prepare to go bishop a3, uh, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, I play d4. Not a great move, I think, uh, castle and, uh, and I c3. Also not the best move and he's just playing normal moves. And here I took and that's, that's probably already a strategic mistake, I think, more or less. Because uh, I thought uh, it was smart to take because if he takes back with the c-pawn his knight would be <laughs> misplaced but he does not take back with the c-pawn of course he does not take back with the c-pawn it's uh, obvious uh, so here I was I was already uh, uh, I was not very happy with my position uh, I'm, I'm definitely not better uh, I was I was hoping to get something with e4 to work but it just doesn't work he always just takes the knight uh, so I was sitting and sweating and thinking oh no and and I was playing against this guy and I had to win and it's already a mess and and I'm not better and I'm spending all my time and uh, uh, but okay we all been there bishop f4 just pretending everything is in order I'm just moving and he takes or takes of course and it, the problem is if I take here he just go to d7 and to c5 and it's just uh, it's just and it seems like these Slav players, they never do anything, but then they end up in a decent position anyway. So this is a <laughs> problem with a, with a very no annoying open. So I took with the bishop, but of course this is not like, there's no real pressure here. And uh, he just played bishop b7. And, and I, <laughs> I just kept pretending I was sort of attacking him <laughs> with, with this. And, uh, and he went here and, and I think I'm, I think black is more or less uh, slightly better already. Bishop a3 will come at some point if I'm not. Um, and well, uh, I could castle and uh, decide that he, he's allowed to attack me or something. And, uh, but then I decided, okay, I know this is bad, but I have to try and play for a win. So I played a3 and this, well, don't try this at home. Uh, it's not the best move uh, for sure. If you're creating weaknesses on the side of the board where, um, well, I just played rook c1. So I'm not going to castle queen side because that would be illegal. So 
Mm, I don't know. Uh, he castled. He was not like uh, scared or anything. And I played d4, which was <laughs> the point of the the a3 move. Uh, and um, I'm I'm slowly and I knew this. I, I'm slowly <laughs> sort of destroying my position. And I just I felt I had to do something <laughs> here. <laughs> and uh, and he decided to go here, which was a little bit uh, surprising. I was, I was, of course, hoping that I could somehow uh, trap this uh, this guy. The problem is, doesn't work. If I do this, he just goes to, uh, well, he can do all sorts of things. He can play knight e8 and f6, um, and he can also play knight e, bishop e4, and and he will definitely get some uh, some fine compensation here. So, so this is just, it's not... It's not fantastic. Um, so I played uh, e3. It was more like uh, okay, I'm 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 I messed up my position. I'm trying. I'm, I will have to spend some time trying to repair it. And here he should probably be ambitious with with h5. Uh, but I knew that uh, this Peter Bergstrom is very very solid player with the like playing the Karokan and the Slav and basically not doing much he's just sitting there so so uh, I, I i knew it. and this is 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 not the best move um it's not like this bishop here will be a big problem for him but it's just a little bit too passive he's he's actually already better and he should should start play, playing and um and he's still fine and uh, and this is also uh, and when we know this from uh, if you watch the um, uh the videos with the uh, um, the Karlsbad structure, you know, that this uh, the knight will often be good here, uh, sitting, controlling all the nice squares in the white camp, uh, with the, or in, on the white squares. Uh, but okay, uh, I felt like okay, maybe I can. Well, he has to make a mistake some somewhere, right? He, players with 23, uh, 26, they make mistakes. <laughs> so they, they uh, come, come on, uh, make your mistake. Please do it now. <laughs> and, and of course, uh, he, nah, but he kept on playing uh, pretty well here. F6, Queen, Bishop, D6, just and uh, I probably have to, to go here. And the thing is, it looks uh, a little bit uh, scary to have these uh, near your king, but there's no real danger. Uh, if I could somehow manage to pull, because I can't get the rooks in in any way. Um, but okay, I, I still pretend like I'm um, I'm attacking here, and uh, here he should probably he should probably play bishop e6. He decides to play h6. Cannot be a bad move either. Just stopping all nonsense because if I want to play g5, I have to play f4, and that will also uh, well, my king is probably in more of a trouble than he is. Okay, bishop uh, f1, but I, I kept uh, it's like it's like bluffing this uh, this uh, move. I'm I'm going I'm gonna put it here, and uh, it's gonna look very 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 spooky here. The thing is, the bishop here just covers everything, so he should not. Be worried, um, but he is also the kind of guy who likes to exchange, and that's a little bit uh, too. Um, he's he's helping me a little bit because uh, actually he had attacking chances, and he didn't uh, sort of went go for it, and. Um, and I felt that okay. Uh, now we are we are we are in the game, and um, and of course he's probably better, but it's not. It's like uh, I have some squares too now, and uh, this square, and maybe this square, and so on. So, um, and uh, this is typical uh, like overprotecting, um, and because if he plays f5, I would, I would definitely like to play g5, keeping his pawn on f5 uh, for sure. Uh, the thing is, I can't do that right now unless. Uh, but then, if he plays now, then maybe knight g6 is annoying, f3, knight e5, and so on. I'm not sure. Um, but he's playing sensible moves and uh, knight e5, and I decided to, to give a check, uh, not uh, allowing any nonsense, and just putting the king here. Um, and we are having a sort of interesting position. It's probably very equal. I was hoping to outplay him here. Um, and I was slowly uh, and just... And I, I like that he left the, the, the e-file. Uh, felt good. Uh, and, 
and I'm, I'm playing careful here, overprotecting from the beginning. At some point, maybe I can start a, a minority attack. I might, I'm also hoping for for some that this will will work and and this phalanx will be be weak a6 um and rook e1 and then there's of course always sometimes with e4 and it's the kind of position where you think that that as the better player you should win but uh, it's it's not so simple <laughs> queen b6 and and nothing really happens here um he's just moving around and i'm moving around and i'm attacking and he went back and and I went here. Um, I'm threatening to win a pawn with knight d6, uh, knight f5, and knight takes h6, and uh, that would be nice. Uh, and here I should probably uh, play knight f5. Actually, uh, that would be a pretty cool move to play. Um, just I don't know, but just to allow this one here because that pawn will be annoying for him. Uh, I I didn't. I was not ready to do that yet. Queen e7, b4. So we are we are slowly um, and queen of, uh, queen c5, um, and I'm probably uh, getting a little here, um, um, and I could. And I decide to go here. The thing is, um, I'm, I'm sometimes I'm, I'm threatening to go here, and I need this to cover to, to be covered. Uh, if I can get the, the e-file with an attack with the rooks, not to take back with the pawn, but to take with the rooks and open the position and attack his king, then I would be happy. But uh, he, is, he is pretty careful um, here. And, uh, and I keep, I'm playing these moves because also because he was sort of short of, on time uh, and, and you don't, you get half an hour, but not much more. And he already spent it more or less. So we were like in, in, in not, but thing is he can't do anything seriously wrong here. Uh, but it felt like, okay, I can, I can annoy him a little bit here. We have this, uh, this spin, so it's maybe nothing, but, but he got a little bit nervous and put it here. So we might give a check here at some point and, um, then he will have to take that into account. Uh, and he. And then I put the queen, I put the queen here. Uh, also, again, uh, with some sort of a, a body check here. It's it's a lot of pawns that has to disappear, but sometimes you never know. So um, this this can make some sense. Um, and I decide, okay, uh, I need to push a little bit. I have to do something. Um, and I am uh, I am of course better here, but but not much is going on. Okay, let's see. Uh, attacking the queen. Uh, and deciding, okay, we're going to do with the minority attack. I'm, I'm having uh, the, 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 the king is controlling all these squares, so nothing bad can happen to it. A, g6 is just not going to happen. So this knight is very strong here on f5, where it uh, covers these guys back here. So I have two plans. I have b5 and I have e4. And white, black can mostly just wait. Uh, and um, and I decided that this was the time to play b5. And he took took and uh, and I realized that that uh, that if I can get some weaknesses, uh, what I'm basically hoping for is to tie him down to to defend the weaknesses and then go after his king. Uh, that would be be the, the the dream choice. But I have to do it in an orderly fashion so my king will not be unsafe in the process. Uh, and he went here, and that's, and, and and this is very typical for how he played the game. With he's going to go here at some point, right? Um, this is 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 the plan. Um, and uh, I took, and I'm not sure I should, but okay. And uh, and this looks very very natural. Queen B4. Um, this kind of move, you just feel this is the right move, right? It takes over a lot of squares here and take away this from the knight. He was trying to, he, he needed to get the knight to d6 to dislodge the knight here. Um, he had been on d5 uh, to sort of impay, uh, stop all action from heaven, but now the queen side is open. He is rushing to the queen side to exchange the knight that's very dominating on f5. Um, he played rook b d8 and uh, I played uh, rook b1 and this is probably good. And uh, by the way, um, 
here uh, rook d8, rook b1. The idea is uh, if he plays knight d6, which was, was the plan uh, for sure, um, I take, 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 and then uh, I exchange here, and, um, and I go here. And uh, next stop is coming, rook here, and j and and check and uh, and an attack here and uh, and this is uh, really 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 not uh, fun for for black. Uh, it might be holdable, but uh, you will get a lot of weaknesses and you will have to play g6 and weaken the h6 pawn to avoid um, being mated. So this was the plan, and um, so. So you can't play knight d6. So that was the idea behind. But he played king d8, um, and I played e4. And the thing is, I thought this was. Uh, I was hoping more or less. Well, I, I was not sure. I was hoping this was good. The, the idea is, I hope he takes, <laughs> because then uh, then I can take uh, uh, with the rook, and uh, and he would be in 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 serious trouble here. This is is very very dangerous. Uh, Rook e7 is threatening, and uh, and I'm probably winning already. Uh, so this was 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 the hope, um, but of course he played knight d6, and here the hope was that this was good. And check, and king f7, um, and e5, and I think it is good. I think it's it's pretty good, but you can't be too sure takes and th this was of course the idea if i take with the with the rook well it's it will be a draw i think so this is is the idea um the thing is this is a little bit scary to allow uh, connected pass pawns here but on the other hand uh, his king is in trouble and i'm having more space f5 is coming um he plays rook e8 uh, and i could take that um and it's probably all not bad uh, I was not sure, but I, my idea was to play this move, uh, and I'm, now I'm not so happy about it. Uh, I thought he had to play uh, c5, and then I'll play rook d6, and then after d4, his 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 his, his, his rooks are simply uh, he uh, his pawns are simply stopped, and I, I will get a free range on the king side. So that was the the big plan. But he played uh, this move, and uh, that was not so bad. And uh, and then he played this move, and I thought, ah, oh, this is, uh, and this, and and here I was running out of time, and it was very complicated, and and so on, and and it's it's probably better for me, but it's not easy. Um, and uh, I played g5, and it, it, I had I had this plan uh, also earlier with the, if you play c5, then I play g5 and h6. So that was part of the plan, and here um, this is, is is still the plan. Problem is, he plays this move. I play this move, and uh, and this looks very 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 spooky. And he plays this move, and here I lost my nerve, and um, I, I think this move is probably winning. Um, is to go here, e6, king here and I was I was not sure about this um, thing is king is coming uh, you can't move the C pawn so so the D pawn and and it looks good for white it looks good for white but it's it's not totally clear and um, and I was not sure about it and another idea here was to play uh, this move and this is really, uh, it's really <laughs> something seriously, uh, and and I don't know um, what to think about it. The, the idea is, 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 is if it takes, you go king h5, and then then these guys, they hopefully decide, and you go in and you um, and 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 you are shielded by his pawn here. It's called building an umbrella, uh, and it's probably winning uh, it might be but it's just like it's the kind of thing you don't really want to play in a team match where um, 
well, uh, we we were already winning, so uh, I didn't need to 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 do do this. And we won the match, by the way. It would it wouldn't have made a difference, but still losing a match like this. So instead, I just um, chickened out, and we had a draw here. Uh, and and I'm, I'm I actually I, yeah, I drew all the games, uh, and <laughs> I'm not proud of that. It was not uh, my finest moment, but this happens sometimes uh, and too unfortunately anyway uh, i hope you enjoy this on uh, chess opening preparation you can see that it's not so easy sometimes you meet a player who just knows his stuff and you get don't get a game uh, sometimes you don't know your stuff and <laughs> and you have a hard time getting going against the player you feel you should beat and uh, and sometimes you you have a good idea uh, like i did against uh, peer grounding and then she just kills the game and it's uh, and it's just boring because with with pure symmetry so um, openings are uh, frustrating to be honest i think uh, it's it's part of the game that's not so much fun is it anyway uh, okay this was uh, gm talks <laughs>